Garth Bolton fears he doesn't have enough money to retire on. The hospitality worker says the pandemic left him unable to work for months and now with the stock market falling, he's losing money in his super. It's a bit disheartening to see um, <laughs> those years of your life just sort of disappear all, be all because of something you've got no control over. For retiree Beverly Baker, the share market falls have also been scary to watch. So it's a tiny amount that I have in super, um, but it's gone down. That's a fair hit to that. That's between 10 and 15 per cent. While the superannuation sector is now worth about $3.3 trillion, about 10 million Australians are invested in default accounts. In January, the value of these accounts fell by about $40 billion to about $900 billion. That's all most Australians lose on average about $4,000 in the month. Shares in financial markets have been rocked by rising inflation and fears about the timing of interest rate hikes. It's certainly a, a plausible scenario that um, rates go up later this year, but it's, um, you know, there are a lot of other scenarios as well. Fund manager Roger Montgomery says investors are unlikely to see double-digit returns from the stock market this year, but he says people can still take steps to protect their retirement savings. Investors have migrated their money out of cash. The reverse happens as interest rates go up. And so investors are going to find cash much more attractive than they have before. But the industry is urging people to stay calm, even if the share market continues to fall. Super goes up and down and the share market goes up and down. But over the long term, super's doing well. Right now is not the time to panic. People should be thinking about what their strategy is decades into the future. Miss Baker says in the shorter term, people can check their super is invested in stocks, less volatile to market fluctuations and rising interest rates. I don't take a high risk package that's gambling on um, high returns and risk factors. I look at safe, sturdy, steady, uh, slow growth industries. Recent government changes mean that bad performing funds will eventually be weeded out. The ATO's new online tool allows people to compare superannuation funds. By moving to a higher performing, lower fee fund, people could save hundreds of thousands of dollars by retirement. The super funds have got to pick the game up a bit now that it's going to get a little bit more um, competition. Greater competition will mean more working Australians have better choices for their retirement nest eggs now and into the future. Super funds may struggle to post double-digit returns this year, but experts are urging Australians not to panic. Paul Schroeder, CEO of the country's biggest super fund, Australian Super, says it's important to stay the course. Well, it's definitely true that this year will be different than last year, but we take a very long-term view because our job is to make sure that members have their best outcome in retirement. So we, we, we take a 10-year view and then come back to the tactical asset allocation view. So this year ahead will be different and, and we, we are expecting there to be more inflation, um, more growth, for, uh, thankfully, uh, and we'll need to navigate those things really carefully. You're looking at the longer term view, that 10 year view for your members as you just outlined, but will uh, your fund be piling into bonds and cash for this year? Uh, no, the, the, the view of the fund is, and the long term view is that it makes a lot of sense to have a diversified, really diversified portfolio of equities, infrastructure, property and the whole range of assets. That, that's really good for members. And so, no, we'll, we'll continue to be invested in equities. But what we do is just trim and adjust. So we'll, we'll slightly reduce our exposure to equities, but, but no chopping, no changing, just trimming and adjusting. So no major uh, asset reallocation for the fund this year in light of the new environment that we're facing? No, I think the way to think about the new environment is we expect that growth will come back and we also expect that there will be more inflation. And it's really important for the fund to think about inflation in, in two really important ways. One is that inflation impacts upon retirees because they need more money to buy what they used to be able to buy before. So we've got to think about that through the eyes of the retiree, but also for members who are in work. Uh, their wages need to keep pace so that they can buy what they previously sought to buy. So, so inflation really, we know how to navigate 
all our way through each part of the cycle and we know what to do in those situations and that's one of the advantages of being a big, well-resourced fund. But for members, inflation matters because it changes your buying power. Mm. So what do you say then those to those members who have experienced windfalls with the stock market rise in the last couple of years to what they're experiencing now who might be a bit nervous? Well, well firstly, I'm not here to give anyone personal advice. I'm certainly not here to do that. But what we've learned through time is that staying the course is the most likely way to make the most money risk-adjusted, post-tax and post-fee. So staying the course as part of a very well-run, strong fund that performs well with low cost, that's the key to it. It's really important not to let small volatility get in the way of your decision-making. We're thinking here about how will I fund my retirement? That's a long-term view. We're a very patient investor and it would really pay for members to be patient as well. Paul, you mentioned growth and inflation just earlier. What is the outlook for uh, super funds this year and what do you see as the main challenges ahead? Well, I think how inflation is navigated by the central banks and policymakers will be really important to get right, getting that balance right. We are expecting an uptick in inflation. And as you have an uptick in inflation, you often see interest rates rise as, as policymakers try and slow the economy. So getting that balance between the brake and the accelerator will be really important for us to navigate uh, properly and carefully. And, and probably the other thing to say is that it will get harder to make the sort of returns that have been made in the past as inflation rises and as interest rates rise. Mm. We know that super funds have been particularly busy in the M&A infrastructure space over the last year or so. It was reported last year that Australian super is keen to buy more unlisted assets. Are you eyeing off anything in particular at the moment? Unlisted assets are a really good asset for a super fund like ours. And in fact, being a member of a fund like ours gives you access to those assets in a way that you might not be able to otherwise. So we are very interested in buying uh, unlisted assets and infrastructure assets. And you might have noticed that last year we, we bought um, some digital infrastructure, which is another way to think about infrastructure. We're interested in airports and ports as well, but only ever at the right price because the easiest way to make a good asset a bad asset is to pay too much for it. We know it's an election year, Paul. How might that uh, impact on your fund? Well, I don't think the election will have much bearing. I, I think we've got both parties committed to the superannuation guarantee rising to 12%, and that's a terrific thing for, for members. Um, it will, of course, be a distraction and people will get caught up in it. But superannuation is a really long-term thing. It's here to fund people's retirement. It funds Australian business and it helps fund the whole economy and the whole community as, as we age. So, look, a federal election, it'll be important, but I don't think it'll have a big bearing on superannuation. Paul Schroeder, great to talk to you. Thank you for your time. Terrific. Thanks for the opportunity.